Turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 4, four from verse 16 to 22. Luke chapter 4 from verse 16 to 22. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And it was under the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him, and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth, and they said, Is this not Joseph's son? Hallelujah. Recently, there is a feedback that I've been getting. One of my guys called me from the UK two days ago and said, when I'm reading the Bible, it's your voice that I hear. He said, I'm reading Judges now, and this guy has a very strong memory. Sometimes he will tell me what I preached 15 years ago. Word for word. Even things I will not even remember. With Taitu. Talking about Dr. Shei at same day. I got the feedback. Paul recently called me one day and he was reading the book of Genesis. Because he wanted to study the book of Genesis. And he said to me, Every chapter, I hope, I remember one message. We just say, oh, this is the second anniversary. Oh, this was pure language. And if there's any person that has the ranking to say that more, it should be Inca because recently we were traveling and uh, just listening to so many sermons that were preached there and uh, it's amazing how many stories some of you have had for the very first time in Fetress Assembly. We've gotten so acquainted with the word. But listen, two or three days ago or four days ago, I was reading the Bible and I saw a story I'd never seen. Does not matter how acquainted you are with scripture. If you assume too much, you will miss out. I was shocked. The type of story you will not see in the general. It was somewhere in the Dodos Leviticus. Uh -huh. In other words, for you that think you have learned all you can learn, seen all you can see, you can see, <laughs> you can lie to yourself. Tell your neighbor, read again as the title of the psalm. Read again. Revelations chapter 1, verse 3. Revelations chapter 1, verse 3. 
Jesus said, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. In this word, we saw three operations of the word. Blessed are those who read. Say blessed are those who read. Ask your neighbor, when last did you read? How many of you know the reading culture is dying at a very strong pace? Blessed are those who read. Blessed are those who hear what is written. What is written. I discovered that one of the major instructions God gave the prophets in the Bible is to write. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 and 3. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 and 3. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Somebody say write the vision. Make it plain on the tablet that it may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, though it, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Write the vision so that he who reads. So the vision can be written and nobody will read it. And if nobody reads it, nobody will run. And some people will complain that God has not spoken, but they've not read what is written. One major communication God gave to the prophet is write. And I don't know how many of us are taking advantage of what is written because what is written can determine how you run. Are you following me, church? In Revelation chapter 1 verse, 1, verse 11, Revelations 1 verse 11, showing you, I'll show you through scripture that God wants his word to be documented. This is Jesus speaking to John. Saying, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last. What you see, what do you do with it? Talk to me. Somebody say, what you see, write in the book. Send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. That's the first word. Verse 19. In verse 19. Write these things which you have seen. Are you seeing the command again? And the things which are and the things which will take place after this. In chapter 2 verse 1 of Revelations. He said to the angel of the church of Ephesus. Write. So much of God's conversations are already written. Are you following me? It will be full added for, no, for people not to read them. What you have seen, write. Why is God trying to, telling the prophet to write? Because God wants to preserve that experience for as many people as possible. You might not be in Patmos, but you can experience Patmos. You might not be there when the veil of heaven was opened to John and he, and he was taken to, the, to, to heaven and he saw a door open and he had holy, holy, holy is the Lord. But as long as you can read what is written, you can be part of that conversation so that he that read it will run. And it's not just a New Testament pattern of God. In Exodus chapter 17, Verse 14. You see that God has been doing this from the Old Testament. The Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book. Somebody say, Write this. And recount it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. I have said it, but I want to preserve that thought for many generations. And what God said to Moses to preserve that thought is that he should write it in a book. In Exodus 34, verse 27, Exodus 34, 27, the Lord said to Moses, write these words, for according to the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with you 
and with Israel. Praise the Lord. Why do we write? We write because the faintest ink is sharper than the greatest memory. How many of you are amazed about so many things you thought you had learned but you have forgotten? Sometimes when I'm having encounters, I'm, 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 I say, ah, this word is so deep, I can't forget it. Then one day I wake up looking for that psalm. Where is this word? Where is this word? But sometimes when you see my notes, you just see Philippians 1. If I, if I, then I open my eyes, I say, see that Philippians 1. I can connect back to that moment. Are you following me? Are you following me? You write what you don't want to be mistaken. In Esther chapter 8, verse 7 to 11. Follow me this morning. I want to bring you back to the art of reading. Because it's one spiritual culture that, that allows God's kingdom to prosper. And many of us are doing nothing. You are just trying, looking for somebody that will give you a word. Are you following me? Am I making sense? One day I will be free. Then King Alzerus said to Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew, Indeed, I have given Esther the house of Ammon. They have hanged him on the gallows because he tried to lay his hand on the Jews. You yourself write a decree concerning the Jews as you please in the king's name. Seal it with the king's signet. For whatever is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's signet ring, no one can revoke. So the king's scribes were called at the time in the third month which is the month Sivan in the 23rd day, and it was written according to all Mordecai commanded to the Jews, the satraps, the governors, the princes and the, of the provinces from India to Ethiopia, 127 provinces in all, to every province in his own script, to every people in their own language, to the Jews in their own script and language. Wow, this king was ruling from Ethiopia to India, how many languages will be there? Can you imagine? Let's go to Joss. So when I when I when I see Daniel, I, I tell him, uh, "You are Berom." He said, "No, I'm Berom. I'm Miangu." So two days ago, we said, "Are you from?" So you got to the Mangu. He said, "No, not Mangu. There's Mangu. There's Miangu." Nobody. Me, I, I'm not sure whether the Tower of Babel was not somewhere in Nigeria. But when this king wanted to write a decree, he never wanted anybody to mistake. He wrote it to every man, documented it, sealed it with his signet, wrote it in their language and according to their script. Because whatsoever you write is what you don't want to be mistaken. There is something about oral tradition. It soon develops myths. Somebody will soon tell you, what did you do? I came down and brought one chicken. It's because they didn't write. So everybody that wanted to beautify the story added it, a chapter. And, and somebody told you that it was his grandfather, grandfather that killed the first tiger in his village because nobody was there. So they write and had a portion. But God's words and God's encounters are too important to be left to the will and the desires of men. That's why one of God's command for his word is to write. Are you still with me, church? Isaiah chapter 30, verse 7 to 9. I'm showing you that God so much has invested in writing. It will be foolhardy for you not to read. How many of you know a good book never cries. One, I'm running ahead of my time, myself. One funny and fearful thing about books that they can carry all you need, but they will never shout. Sit on your shelf. The devil will be deep beating you. They don't shout. Except you decide to read. That's when you will know you have been sitting on the treasure without knowing. Some of us, the encounters are already with us. We are only just lazy people. 
We are a people that all these things were written for because we are the people that have come to the end of the age. What does the Bible mean? You are not a man that should live without reference and examples. God will give you so many examples to check your journey. Sometimes you are reading the Bible and Gideon is the one speaking to you. Another time you are reading your Bible and it is Moses that is speaking to you. Another time, I mean, it is too much for you not to have an example. There are too many examples. Somebody born out of wedlock, there is a Jephthah for you to ride, to read about. Somebody, you know what I'm talking about. Somebody that, that is already 80 before they knew God. You are, there's a Moses for you to read. And somebody that is already 12 and God is already touching you. There is a Jesus that you need. There are so so many examples that if you read, you will find yourself. But what do we do? We have all the information in this generation. The only thing we don't do is read. I say, Pastor, what type of sermon is this? Because I read in my scripture, it's got write and read. It's a very spiritual thing. It's as powerful as prayer. Are you hearing? The reason why some people are praying the type of prayers that has no business in heaven and they are praying with passion and sweating is because what is written, they never know. Is it not amazing that all the temptations of Jesus were answered with? It is written. You, you have never, there are some of us that have never picked the Bible to study for one hour in seven months. You are just looking for that day. I was say, the Lord said your, your situation is... It, this morning you are going back to read again. Amen. And in your reading, God will encounter you. Ah, uh, you are not hearing me. <laughs> for the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore I have called her Rahab M. Shebet. But now, write it before them on a the tablet. Not it on a scroll, that it may be for a time to come. Writing preserves truth. Forever and ever. There is more chance for knowledge to last when it is written. Oh my God. When you want to reach a people for God, one of the things you can do for them is transcribe the Bible into their language. A lot happens with them automatically. Because they read it in their own language. It speaks to them. One of the reasons why our educational system is bad in Nigeria is because there's nothing we teach in our language. I'm telling you the truth. You don't know. So you are trying to capture. What do you know that is called uh, gerund? All of you that you glory in the fact that your children can say A to Z when they are two. But they don't know how to call their son name. They will soon be rejoicing when the queen dies. Or, or be mourning when the queen dies. And rejoicing when their country is burning. <laughs> what you get here now? Yeah, call money. Write it <laughs> on the scroll that it may be for a time to come forever and ever. And in verse 9. I'm really rushing. This is a rebellious people, lying children. Children will not hear the law of the Lord. I, I want to jump. Jeremiah 32, Jeremiah 36, 2 and 28. The instruction came to Jeremiah. All I'm saying there is that throughout from the old to the new, you will discover that it was one major tool God used to preserve his encounters. All scripture, Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 are given by the inspiration of God. They are profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hell, scripture is given by inspiration of God. But the only reason why you have access to scripture today is not just because they are inspired. It's because they were written. If the people who wrote the scriptures spoke for the moment under inspiration, but it was never written, it will not come to us. As powerful as inspiration is, how much of information do we hear here and miss? 
Some of you just use, when they say right in church, it is because it's a religious thing. They are never revisited. They are never studied. How much we miss when we don't read. In 2 Peter 1, from verse 19 to 21, the Bible says, we have a more sure word of prophecy. We have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to take it as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Verse 21, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but only men of God spoke. So the most of the instant of scripture is the fact that they were inspired and they speak. But thank God they didn't end with speakings. Most of that which was documented came by inspiration, released by speaking, preserved by writing. They came by inspiration, they were released by speaking, they were preserved by writing. In that Luke chapter 4, Jesus went to the temple. The Bible says, if that, from verse 16, and according to his custom on Sabbath, he stood up to read. One thing the Jews do in the Sabbath on Sabbath day is that they read scriptures. Anybody that is going to understand the plan of God will read scriptures. Am I talking? What did I say? Anyone that is going to understand God's plan, we read scriptures. He stood up to read the scripture. And the Bible said they handed to him the book of Isaiah. And he opened the book and found the place. One fearful thing about that place was there, but he did not call. He said, please, come and read me. He what? He found it. Ah, yeah. How? Oh. Knowledge is too powerful to be craving for attention until you give it. How many of you see that when people are powerful, they don't crave for attention? So, it's, it is, it is, what do you call it? In, in, in the scripture times, a married woman veils herself. She doesn't call for attention because she knows she's already taken. And she knows somebody knows her beauty. And she does not need to crave for anybody. But the prostitute is different. It's called loud and stubborn. Most times what distracts you is loud. Because it has no real value. It's always calling for your attention. What can change you is waiting. It is when you need me, you will come for me. You don't get what I say. Knowledge never shouts. Because it does not want to be put in the hand of a fool. If you are thinking it, if you don't develop an appetite for it, you won't find it. Jesus took it and found the place. And that place was recording the activity of that day. But he was not shouting. And when he read it, he looked at it and said, Today, this scripture is fulfilled. Can you be in the day of a scripture? And that scripture will not look as if it is my day. That scripture is waiting for who will find me. Who will read me? Who will understand me? And, on, and make it known that this is my day. There is no difference between a man who cannot read and a man who does not read. Do you hear what I said? Most of us here, we are literate for nothing. Said you should have fallen around. Let me give you some quotes about books. Is it ah, this one is different too? How can you come? You see, when you see Jews, Jews don't play with knowledge, the knowledge of God. The reason why Muslims we are very is very hard to break Muslims. Is that from age seven, their children, they've taught them Quran. They take them to a school. 
They have been shouting to you in Akan. You that you think one cold snack of scripture once in three weeks. Then you want to go and evangelize. Go. By the time they are true with you, your name will be Zainab. They don't only, they read it in a, in a, even in a foreign language and learn it. With K. You, after 35 years of being in church, he said, let's look for Naum. Is it in my Bible? You now say you have bad dream. It will increase. I'm telling you. Because you ate knowledge. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Christians are the most distracted people I've seen in recent times. They can't focus. To pray for 30 minutes, they are bored. And yet they are looking for a magic wand. Are you Neman? You remember Neman? He was angry when Elijah didn't. He said, I thought he would come out and wave his hand and strike the place. And the leprosy. You are only looking for one superman. God wants to build you up. I said, God wants to build you up. God wants to take you step by step, instructing you the way you ought to go. There are certain things that will never happen for you by the waving of hands. Some of them, it will happen because you sit down. Are you following? When I first got born again, we used to say we have word fast. That one is not food fast. You will sit down and say, today I will read 60 chapters of scripture. Eh? They say, eh? Am I worried? Embrace the word you are following. But if you want to break it, one day you will sit down and say, I want to read 20 chapters. You will read it when it makes sense and when it does not make sense. You will continue to read you, until something will happen. So when I'm preaching in church, something, see, you want to, you are fighting warfare. Satan, I rebuke you. And you are speaking scripture. Philippians 4, 19 there. Psalm 23 verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I hope you believe these statements when I say it. That there is more treasure in books than in all pirate loots on Treasure Island. It was somebody that said it. A man who does not read has no advantage on the man who cannot read. Some of us are so educated illiterate because we don't, we just use it to eat. Is it, uh, is it, I study anthropology. If I can't define the anthropology. No. No difference between you and an illiterate. That's why you are doing things that even your education says you look at yourself. I don't understand. That's why you are carrying all your saving and giving it to a froster. Some of you are so educated as this. Even when you see some chat on social media, automatically you should know that. They, even when you receive some call, you should know they are trying to lie to you. But because of greed, they send your pain. He will not send me. Are you okay? They not care. Pastor, they took out the money in my account. How many of you know that one of the things you do, reading is bad. When you, when you download an app, they will say, read. If they are not planning for you to read, number one, they will make it very long. Number two, they will write it in small, small letter. Do you read? It's because you don't have money. If you have a billion dollars that is at risk, you will know those things have meaning. For you. <laughs> Should we access your data? As, 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 as I want to ping. Those who say, oh, war. 
They know that he's in trouble. Then hidden charges will come. It was just said that I wanted to call Mama. I said, ah. I just opened another bank account in one bank. And I noticed that they were deducting with holding tasks. It was the same type of account I have in other banks. Those ones have never deducted with holding tasks. I said, but did you read? <laughs> they said, it is in it. Start it back. Start it. This might be here. You keep, you keep right here around. With <laughs> I'm telling you how we do natural things. As we do natural things, we do spiritual things. But I thank God for that bank because some people are already glory. They at the first bank in recent time that gave me interest monthly. I've never, some other banks here, I won't mention your name. Mua Mua Nikalemo. So with joy, I give them the withholding tax because I collect it back in interest and the interest is monthly. I've never seen some bank, some ones I've had relationship with for 20 years, they've never given me one nera interest before with all the money because you don't read. Times and conditions apply. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Glory to God. No matter how busy you may think you are, you must find time for reading or surrender yourself to self chosen ignorance. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 10 to 12. The one that really struck me is the fact that a man that does not read has no advantage over a man that cannot read. How do I go to war and I have a submachine gun in my hand and a man with a dang gun kills me? How? It is not what you have. It's your ability to use what you have. The trainings and the opportunities that God has given you are important, but they are only important if you know how to utilize them. The Lord has poured out on you the spirit of deep sleep. He has closed your eyes, namely the prophet. He has covered your heads, namely the seers. Continue. The whole vision has become to you like the words of a book which is sealed. Which men deliver to one who is literate saying, read this please. And he says, I cannot for it is sealed. Then the book is delivered to one who is illiterate saying, read this please. And he said, I am not literate. What's the difference between the two? Hmm? I thought one is literate. One is not literate. But to the literate, the book is sealed. To the illiterate, there is no hope. Even if you unseal it. There is a culture I'm trusting God to revive today. Because there are too, there's too much of information and God's knowledge passing beside us that we are missing. Documented for the end of the age. Many times when I read even, one of the things I like reading is biographies. How many of you know this word is spherical? There is nothing new in the world. The world goes around in circles. COVID-19 is not the first wave of, what do you call it? Pandemic. But when you see some, what they used to call pandemic, you know who are playing. Go and read about the Spanish influenza, you know that this is not pandemic. God has given man knowledge. It's cycle. I've read the stories of people that were despised totally and they became what nobody can imagine. So many times when I get to the faces of my life that I'm despised, I know I'm walking in the company of people going somewhere. Since you don't listen, the only thing you watch is African magic. 
There's no Israeli Yoruba. There's no way they start. They must end in the Babalao's house. If you are not careful, you will end there. Because that's what's in your mind. They can start from a church and still end in a shrine and make it still look like it's together. Gloria Copeland married at 19. You are a baby to be 27 and you can't do a relationship. I don't just like guys talking to me. Some people have been handling it since 19. They became matriarchs. I don't like a guy talking to me. And you want to marry? I don't know talking to me. They will talk to you. <laughs> Am I here? Who is with me here? You know, guys, I will set you up. Don't rejoice. Rejoice not, oh, guys. For your joy might be short-lived. <laughs> but I'm serious. There's too much information that can help you in the world. And much more in the world. Read again. We have gotten too familiar with the word of God. Because you don't know the word of God, you are looking for prophetic encounter. You are just looking for somebody to tell you to do something strange. So that your life can move forward. If you don't obey the written word, many things will not work. Are you following me? In Deuteronomy chapter 17 from verse 14, look at how God prepared kings. This is how God prepared kings. From verse 14. When you come to the land which your God has given you and you possess it and dwell in it and say, I will set a king over me like all the nations that are around me. You shall surely set a king over you whom the Lord your God chooses. One from among your brethren you shall set as king over you. You may not set a foreigner over you who is not your brother. What is the ritual? But he shall not multiply horses for himself nor cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses. For the Lord has said to you, you shall not return that way again. Neither shall he multiply wives for himself, lest his heart turn away, nor shall, shall he multiply silver and gold for himself. Continue. It shall be when he sits on the throne of his kingdom that he shall write for himself a copy of the law in a book from the one before the priest and the Levite. There is one there. But God said, you know, it's right, it's not that it will hurt anything. It's the same thing that is there that is writing. But when he's writing it again, he can follow through the thoughts. Are you following me? He will write, he will take the copy from the priest, then he write for himself. God said, this is the way I want to prepare my kings. My kings are people that will be familiar with what I have written. Look at verse 19 and 20. And it shall be with him. That's after he has written. And he shall what? Read it all the what? Tell your neighbor, reading the Bible is your lifetime commitment. When I got born again, my friend, Pastor Morak, they used to say, I've read the New Testament three times this year. Have you read the Bible before? What about to come? You think, think, but you know you finish okay, okay when you are doing physics. You did not think you read it. You knew you read it. Too much of assumption. And yet, these people that assume are the people you can never teach. When you see them that say, let's teach the word of God, they are bored. And yet, it's not that. 
he will read it all the days of his life, which means at some point in his life, he would have finished reading it. Then God will say what? Read again. Because when you are reading again, then you will see another part of the sacrifice you didn't see. Give us our daily bread. No matter what you heard in the word yesterday, it can't stop what you will eat today. Are you following me? You will read it all the days of his life. That he may learn. There is a connection between your continuous reading and your learning. And I'm serious. That he may learn to fear the Lord his God and be careful to observe all the words of this law and these statutes. That his heart may not be lifted above his brethren. That he may not turn aside from the commandment to the right and to the left. That he may prolong his days in the kingdom. If I tell you the word of God can prolong your days, what will you do with it? Who wants to live long here? For they are alive to those who find them and health to their flesh. God's word is life. The reason why you are worked up with everything that is happening to you is because you have not stayed in the world. If you stay in the world, the world will show you that the worst has happened to people and they walk through it. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. It's not just giving you a command. It will give you examples. Your brother sold you to your face. If he sold Aramide, you are Joseph. Forget Look at you and say, Eta! I went home and told mommy, we don't know where Harabide is. And you came back. <laughs> and pastor now started preaching, don't worry, it is God's, it is your own. I'm all alone. He said, pastor, please, you are not the one that was in prison. And if the selling took you to White House, you can be magnanimous. But if the first place the selling took you, is to Sambisa to be a slave. Then from that place to the prison, Nigerian Correctional Service. Nothing gets corrected there. And you came out. If you don't have the word whole, this morning I'm challenging you to hit the word in blood chunk. NJ. Ancient, this small, small nonsense. You will hit it in large chunk. When your emotions want to react in this, in this way, the word will hit it from that place. When you want to react in this way, it will hit it from this place. Then you will just find a balance for yourself. That's when you will not turn around to things you think you cannot do. This is how God prepared kings. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. This book of the law shall not depart. If I do one start here, some of you will be shocked. I will not be tempted. This is the house of the Lord. I don't want you to lie. But I say, when last did you read your Bible? And you read a chapter. <laughs> I'm making it worse. <laughs> It's a serious issue. It's a ser I'm telling you, these are the reasons why we are having issues in church. Telling you the truth. I read one memory verse this morning. Already to bed. Already to memory verse. You are raising three children, you are still reading memory verse. <laughs> three children. Already asking you life questions. You are, amazing, you are reading memory verse. Then what I read this one is Matthew 1 1. This is the journey of Jesus Christ. If I son of Abraham, I son of. Ah! Ah! Son of Abraham. <laughs> this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. 
there is good success and there is bad success. And what will determine whether your success is good is your acquaintance with the word of God. Thy word is a light to my path, a lamp to my feet. This life is too dark. Your brain can't interpret it by yourself. This life is too dark. Forget it. This life where, you, where friends appear as enemies, enemies appear as friends. Do you know how many people you embraced many years ago? Take many, take many. Today you are crying. If I had no. Oh, what did Jeremy let say to? The word is the light. The word will tell you, don't make a shorty for anybody. Some of you are too assured about human beings as if you are talking about God. That's how you went to sign for people that you don't know they are taking low. They are calling you now. <laughs> Your friend is going to death. Because your problem is that you always met the person in church. So you think church is everything about the person. And you don't have the light of the word. Glory to God. How do I enter this psalm? So. <laughs> Deuteronomy 11, 18 to 21. Deuteronomy 11, 18 to 21. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be frontless before your eyes, between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. Somebody say God's word as used in every situation. He can speak to you when you are lying down. When you are down, he has a word. He can speak to you when you are rising. When things are working, God, God's word can cause you. Because you see, both, of, both lying down and rising up can be challenges. Then you shall write them on the doorpost of your house. This, are you seeing command? As you are approaching your house, when you are carrying a woman, it's not your wife inside the house. As you get to the doorpost of your house, thou shall not commit adultery. The woman said, ah, let's enter. I said, Kuli, yeah. You've seen something they've not seen. Uh, are you following me? People asking you why you are not running into the same riotous ways with them. You have seen something they have not seen. And it's right in your sight. It's right in your eyes. It's in your mind. It's entrenched somewhere. Are you following me? People say, ah, but it's our money. Even if you take it, it's no sin. Don't worry. I will tell the HOD. Have you noticed today that there's sin is very hard to define? Everything is. And just do it. Those people have not kept these things. It's not speaking to them from every side. Glory to God. Who are those Nigerians? I need to take you to Canada. It's not cold. But I saw some of you changing the age. I'm changing. Next Sunday, where you are come, that's where. Amen. Verse 21, don't mind me, I'm just. That your children, the days of your, and days of your children may be multiplied in the land with the Lord swore to your father. Let me get into a quick thought for you and I'll get out of it for you. Second Chronicles chapter 30. Second Chronicles chapter 30. It's a long read, but I will just jump to verse 23. This was a Passover feast kept in the days of Hezekiah. Bible said, then the whole assembly agreed to keep the feast another seven days. And they kept it another seven days with gladness for Hezekiah, the king of Judah, gave to the assembly a thousand bulls, seven thousand sheep. And the leaders gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and 10,000 sheep and a great number of priests sanctified themselves. And the whole assembly of Judah rejoiced. Also the priests and the Levites, all the assembly that came from Israel, the sojourners that came to the land of Israel. 
and those who dwell in Judah, there was great joy in Jerusalem. For since the time of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel, there has been nothing like this in Jerusalem. Then the priests and the Levites arose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard, and their prayer came up to the holy dwelling place to heaven. Since the days of Solomon, there has been nothing like this. Since the days of Solomon, there have been Passovers. Are you following me? But there has not been Passover accurately the way it should be described. You know why? Because a lot is lost in assumption. What right things take you to is that they bring you back to the original intention. That's why will is written. When you write it, they cannot, and they cannot easily say, maybe this is what he's thinking. You cannot think for him. So many years they kept doing the Passover, but they never went to check the prescriptions. But in the days of Hezekiah, I will show you again the days of Josiah, they went to read again what it is. Suddenly, their eyes of understanding open. That we've been doing this thing, but not necessarily the way it ought to be done. There is a king in the Bible. They call him Josiah. He was a king that had a very strange birth. In 1 Kings chapter 13, we know his story. Prophet, called the young prophet, approached the king of Israel and said, O altar, this altar, this altar of a false god created here. He said, a king will arise, a child will be born, whose name is Josiah. He will sacrifice your priests on this altar. He will burn your incense on you and men's bone on you. Will, you know, he said and prophesied all the word. He mentioned Josiah by name and Josiah was born 800 years after. 800 years. And you know the story of the young prophet who prophesied? That young prophet died that day. Because he himself Broke the word of the Lord. So there was chance that even what he prophesied was not documented. Because I discovered something about Josiah. Josiah fulfilled that prophecy not because he wrote it somewhere. You know, and it was right and it was, they were reading it to him. I will tell you how Josiah fulfilled the prophecy. So that man died. And the old prophet said, please bury me in the tomb of this young prophet. Then when you go read the story of Josiah in 2 Chronicles 34, he was young when he began, became a king. I think he was eight years old. And he had, from verse 3, he began to have a heart towards God's house. He wanted to rebuild God's house. And as we were building that house, I think in verse 14, go to verse 14. Now when they brought out the money that was brought in the house of the Lord, Ilkar the priest found the book of the law. The book of the law just seated there. That book contained the destiny of that nation without shouting. That book, already wrote, written in that book was that when Israel is going in this way, judgment will come. So you carried, they were rebuilding the temple. Then they found the book. And he carried, said, the priest said, I found the book of the law. Then he gave it to another man called Shaphan, the scribe. Who is the scribe? The scribe is the literate. And that one said, take the book. Then Shaphan went to the king and said, um, Ukiah has found a book. And the Bible says the king said they should start reading the book. And as they were reading the book, the king tore his clothes. Because suddenly from that writing, he could interpret this time. Are you following me? And he said, ah. Then you know what the king said? He said, please go to the prophetess. Go ask the prophetess whether what is in this book is true. The prophet said, tell the king, judgment is angry over Israel. So, 
the book of the law had that judgment in it. And they kept quiet. Until somebody had the heart to read it. So the prophet said, tell Josiah, he will die, go to his grave in peace, but this word, because no prophet can overwrite what is written. If any prophet tells you to do something that is not written in the word, he's lying to you. Are you hearing me? So he said, so he began to, to begin to do everything to purge Israel. Then he began to fulfill the prophecy that he went to the, to the tombs and rushing. Then he saw some mountains. He brought out bones of the priest of Baal that is there. Burned them on the altar. And as he was about to burn, then he saw another inscription. Somebody wrote, here is the bones of the young prophet. So he said, what is this that is written? I'm always imagining that person that wrote that thing did not know the good he was doing. The young prophet's bone would have been burnt with the bones of priests of Baal. Then somebody told him, this is the bone of the prophet who prophesied what you are doing. How did Josiah enter into what was prophesied for him? It's not by reading the prophecy. It's by reading the law. He was just reading the law. The law brought him what? Consciousness. The law brought him jealousy for God's land. And as he was responding to the law, he was fulfilling the prophecy. Yeah. There are too many people who are occupied with prophecy without reading the word. Every day they are looking at it. They say, hey, ha, TD days, they said, this year is the year of purposeful promotion. Josiah fulfilled the word without even being conscious of it. Are you following me? But he was conscious of the law, the written word of God. Christians get so much into spiritual frenzy and experiences and neglect that which is already documented. Are you following me? And they just want to walk into God's plan. And many a times, you can know all the words of a prophet over your life and not be able to fulfill it if you ignore the word of the Lord that is already written. And you can know the word of the Lord that is totally written without knowing the word of a prophet over your life and fulfill the word of the prophecy. Because the prophet's word is always in agreement with what God has said. Are you following me, church? So I tell you again, read again. We need to be a people. This is how this guy just broke into this experience. Let me take you to something in the book of Nehemiah. I just want to raise your appetite to read. Most especially to read the word of God. Yes, when you are in a church like Faith Trust, very few things might take you unawares. But that's not true too. A lot. Look, go, to, go to Nehemiah chapter 8. From verse 13. Oh. I'll, go, I'll, I'll come there, but how many of you remember that the day Mordecai exposed those who wanted to kill the king in Esther chapter 2? The only thing that was done is that it was written. And because it was nothing was done, no. No reward was given. No commendation was given. The only thing that was done was it was written. Somebody said it is nothing. No. Whatsoever is written can last days. So in Esther chapter 6, that's Esther chapter 2. In Esther chapter 6, the king could not sleep. And the king called for what? What was the book of record? So what was written became what was read. And it was a day when that, that that which is written was read that it became active. Are you following me? You see, the word of God will be written and it will keep quiet as though it's not potent until somebody can read it. And when the king started reading, the king said, what has been done to this man? 
there is a portion of God's idea of his plan where he commands his prophet, right? But when you want to connect it, he will now come to you and say, read. <laughs> Are you following me? Then when you read, you just, it just takes you back to that moment and connects you to things that have been decided but have not yet been activated. I don't know whether you're following me. How many of you know your victory is already decided? You might be going through some battle now. It does not mean it is not finished. Some of you say, but Jesus says it's finished, but I'm going through this. That's what is written. So that you go and read it again and activate what is written into your life. Are you following me? And that's the time you can bring the enemy where he belongs. But just keep sitting down there and be going around and be reading junk. Go to that Nehemiah chapter 8 again. From verse 13. Are you getting blessed? It's important. This is important. It's a culture of, of God's people. I'm going to give you a command this week. Every one of you is going to go back to our YouTube page. We are going to go listen to that series I call Field Cities and Villages. How many of you remember? It's about three or four part series. I ask you again. What's she hang by? The reason. Now, let me tell you what in, in those days, one of the greatest tragedies of ancient days is when they feel libraries are burnt down. There's a, there's a, major, scan, a major crisis they call the burning down of the library of Alexandria. They believe it distorted human history to today. But so much was in that library. The Romans, I think, burnt it down. But well, you can't understand it. But let me bring you a near thing that can make you understand. How many of you can imagine if your phone crashes now? Why? Is it no phone? Hmm? And your laptop? All the work you have been doing. You okay? care? Your, it will not happen. It will not happen. Your dissertation, your this, all the papers. So very jail. So as well, when house is on strike, people will just write in, we're writing paper, writing paper. I didn't know that. Then you type password. It no open. What will you do? You know the power of knowledge. And you know knowledge is not acquired suddenly. So Google will say, do you want this thing to be uploaded in the cloud? So that in case you miss it, you can recover. You don't mind. Even if they are reading it, please upload it in the cloud. Upload it in the cloud so I can have it again. Do you understand what it means? That's the same way when a people... Ignore that which is documented. You miss so much that God has expressed over time. And life is designed in a way in which every generation builds on that which has always been before. Are you following me? Now in the second day, the heads of the father's house and all the priests and all the people with the priests and Levites but gathered to Ezra the scribe in order to understand the words of the Lord. This is the book, this is the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, if I have time, I will show you two sides of the Feast of Tabernacles. I will show you from the scripture. And you will think they are speaking about two different feasts. There is a way the scribes see the Feast of Tabernacles. There is a way the people see it. Let me explain to you. You remember when they took Jesus to the temple at 12? Then they found him with the doctors. The doctors are the ones researching the real essence of what the Passover is. The people just come to what? Sacrifice. But the doctors are the ones that will say, if it is a lamb without spot, it means God is trying to bring us something without sin. Jesus did not say, most people went to the Passover to the temple to offer sacrifice. 
Jesus went to the Passover and entered behind where the idea, the thought behind that gathering. Are you following me? You see? And, 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 and that was why when they saw the apostles, the Bible said that they knew that they were unlearned men. But they have been with, who are unlearned men? Unlearned men are the people who do the rites of the festivities without the thought behind it. But what did Jesus do to Peter? He made him not to just do the right. In fact, do you know when Jesus came, he replaced the right with the thought. Eventually he told them, I am the Passover. So when some people are still killing lamb, he said, listen, he replaced it with the thought that this is when I died. That's the way I died for the whole world. Do you understand that knowledge was more important? The knowledge of God was more important than the practices. That's a part of the reformation of the New Testament. Not getting this. Or else at that point, people were just going. They were, so Jesus took them. So when he went from the outer court, where the, so the, those ones said it's among the acquaintances, those will come every year. Joseph Mary, they just come every year. This Passover time, they sacrifice. There are some of you here, when, when we are praying, you are not, you have woman bad around church. But you need to get into what prayer is. Are you following me? So that sometimes when you seem to have a delay, if you have been in the place where the thought line of prayer is, you can process your journey. And say, okay, this is where I am. This is where I am going. But too many Christians just like the rights. Pastor, just speak the word. And I will. There's a part of the feast that is in that description. Are you following me? But because you are sons. Who are sons here? I said, because you are sons, you will come into the place where we can enter. Because in that place, you said, don't you know I must go about doing my father? And do you know something about sons and servants? Servants don't know what their masters do. Those are the people doing the rights. Sons, no. Friends, I don't call you servant. I call you friend. Because you speak to friend the idea. You say, you say that lamb, this is what it is means this sacrifice this is what it means are you following me so when the people were doing right the apostles were getting the essence of what those things are and that's where god's children should be if i don't finish this today i'll finish that another time because i'm trying to find a place to talk now go to that name eight again so, verse 14. They found written in the law with the Lord had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths during the feast of the seventh month. And that they should announce and proclaim in all their cities in Jerusalem and go out to the mountain, bring olive branches, branches of olive, of oil trees, mountain branches, palm branches, branches of leafy trees to make booths as it is written. People went and brought them, made themselves booths, each one on the roof of his house or in their courtyard, on the courts of the house of the Lord, in the open square of the water gate, in the open square of the gate of Ephraim. And the whole assembly of those who had returned from the captivity made booths, sat under the booth for since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun. Until that day, the children of Israel had not done so. Question, were the children of Israel doing the feast of Tabernacles? Let me explain from the day. After Joshua, there were judges. After judges, there was, there was, let's even say there was Samuel. After Samuel, there was Saul. After Saul, there was David. After David, Solomon. And after Solomon and 14 generations, there was captivity. This is return after captivity. And that was when they discovered that they've been doing something, not the way. It was the day they went to read that they discovered They've continually done something without fully describing the essence of it. There is no difference between an illiterate and a man who does not read. It just came back and said, ah, from the days of Joshua, we have not done so. So there was very great gladness. What made them to encounter it? They went to the scribe and they found written. The question that is always shocking me is that so that which was written was always there. All the years they were doing their own, what was written was just looking at them. 
You didn't get it, but he didn't talk. Can't find wisdom until you have a heart for it. Just listen. It's a bride, it's not an alert. May God give you a new test this morning. I thought you would say better, amen. amen. I said, may the Lord give you a new test this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daniel, Daniel 912 said, I understood by books that 70 years was the prescribed time of the captivity. God spoke it through the mouth of Jeremiah, but the reason why Daniel connected is because it was written. Daniel was right, reading and he found it. Then he began to pray. Daniel understood by books. But you know, Daniel sealed too by books. In Daniel 12 verse 4, God told Daniel, write this word in a book and seal it. Because books seal a lot of things for people. I don't know whether that quote is true, but they said, if you want, don't want a black man to know anything, put it in a book. What does it do? Okay, it's called Jehovah. No? Seal in the book. And it's a New Testament truth. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, Paul said, Till I come, give attention to reading. Tell your neighbor, give attention. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Who is there now? Till I come. This is the apostle giving mandate and walk to the church. He said, till I come. Be ready. Exhortation to doctrine. Be wide. Are you following me? I said be wide. Think wide. Look wide. Don't be streamlined. Look for the, are you following me? Read. Read about healing. Read about grace. Read about prosperity. Read about the sacrifice. Read about the joy of the Lord. Are you following me? Read about faith till I come. Give attention to reading. So when you come together, there's a buoyancy in your gathering. Too many of us are looking too ignorant. That's why too many pastors just come and they all say nonsense. Because too many of us are ignorant people. Tell anybody like come. Oh, give attention to reading. This is how you said this year will be different. I hope you know it's September. We've not laid down on one book. Oh. We've not laid down on one book. Oh. Till I come, give attention to reading. Give a, give, <laughs> tell anybody, give attention to reading. I know I'll do anointing service next month, but till I come. Till I come. Till I come. <laughs> Read. Colossians chapter 4 verse 16. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now when this epistle is read among you, one of the cultures of the church in that time is that they take the epistle. The epistle is the letters of the apostles. It's not, it's not that one person will receive it, take it home and read it. Then it will come and say, Paul said no. They will bring the epistle to the gathering. Greetings, Paul the Apostle. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. You will be connecting it as you are there. When this epistle is read among you, see that it is read also in the church of the Laodiceans and that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. This is, they are giving church work. Read this epistle. And please take it to the the one I wrote there to bring it and come and there's so much for you to read. Tell your neighbor, read again. Some of you need to go home today and start reading from Romans. Start from Romans. Just con ask your question. Get confused. Bible study will be deeper. You will be like in God when it comes. I have three questions. Some of you, you never ask questions because you don't read anything actually. When they even teach you. It's not that you are quick, you are quick in understanding. It's that you are dull in the air. <laughs> yeah, you do like this. Mm. They will say, ah, and when I get, hey, I get anything. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 27. Oh. 
I charge you by the Lord that this epistle to be read to all the holy brethren. See, do, do you know the word I charge you? It means it's like I'm holding you responsible. Because the man that wrote this was in prison. So, he said, the only way you will not waste my effort is that I charge you by the Lord. This epistle must be read to all the holy brethren. How many times have we wasted the labors of people God sent? Because we never go again. We never read again what they sent to us. Can you imagine the letters of Paul reaching the Thessalonian church when it was never read? So when he was telling them, do not sorrow like them that are sorrowing in the world, they will continue in sorrow. Not because the answer had not been provided, but because it was never read. I charge you by the Lord, don't let the Holy Scriptures waste. Read again. Are you following me, church? I charge you by the Lord. I charge you, I encourage you. I instruct you, church. This week I'm instructing you, go back into the world. I'm telling you now. That's your buffer. When the enemy comes, he will come. If you think he won't come, you are wasting your time. How will I be preaching Satan and I rebuke you if the enemy is not going to come? He's going to come. That's going to be your buffer. And do you know why you have an advantage? In Acts chapter 13 verse 12 and verse 26 to 28, Paul the apostle no sorry, Acts chapter 15 15 verse 12 Did I get that please? Let me get it please for you. I'm looking for Paul when he was in a city called Okay, it's Acts 13, from verse 13. Now when Paul and his party set sail from Paphos, they came to Parga in Pamphylia, and John departing from them returned to Jerusalem. Listen to this. And when they departed, they came to Parga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, they went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. What do Jews do on synagogue? And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent to them, men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Now, principally, what did the Jews do on the Sabbath day? Sit. I know one preacher, he said, on Saturday morning in his house, Dr. Adele, he said, from six to nine, nobody talks, including children. Everybody is reading by the law. Let me tell you something. May God help all of us. You want to get things done. You will be strong about them. God will give us wisdom. So the children know. It has, it's already a culture. Then by night they gather. What did you read? Is it, is it not the same you that have been running from Monday to Friday looking for money? Sometimes, you, even when you come back, your children is asleep. Sit down. What did you read? Today. Somebody is lying. By the time a lie after three weeks, it would have been true with all the lies. <laughs> it was that read. The Jews go to the synagogue and they read the law. They read the prophet. By the time you get to verse 26, Paul told them, a disadvantage they have. It's a men and brethren, sons of the family of Abraham, those who are among you fear the Lord. To you, the word of this salvation has been sent. But those who dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not know him or even the voices of the prophet, which are read every Sabbath. The Bible told me in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, that till today, in the reading of the Old Testament, there is a veil. This was the disadvantage. As powerful as scripture is, the Jews 
had a veil. Because if they didn't have that veil, they would not crucify the son of glory. But the choir told us this morning that the veil had been taken away. Which means we are the ones that read without a veil. If the people who read with a veil read every Sabbath, how much the people who are looking at it without a veil in their days it was it shall come to pass in your days is and it came to pass you are using what is already done to interpret what is happening now they were written in hope the hope beclouded them created a veil like the veil was in the face of moses but the bible said but when we shall turn to the lord the veil shall be taken away for wherever the spirit of God is there is liberty this is the advantage and you must not waste it the veil has been taken away I was somewhere recently and I was preaching and, and the person I went with me told me said, one of the funny things is how you will be Painting what is happening. I was painting Nigeria. You'll be reading Nigeria from that scripture. I was reading from Deuteronomy. I was showing all the kidnapping. You, there is nothing happening in the world today that is new, that is not in the world. The reason why you are not seeing it is there is a veil. The veil is taken away in the Lord. The only person that does not have a right to see this one is the person that is not born again. But if you have turned to the Lord, the Lord is that spirit. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, is not, when they say there is liberty, it's not jiving. It has the ability and the right to see into God. That's liberty. That's the liberty is describing there. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is access. Are you following me? So listen, today we must take advantage of this operation of God. Glory to God. So today, I just want you to know one thing about wisdom. It will not shout. We just see them. It is distraction that is loud and stubborn. Coming up to your face, even when you are not looking for it. How many of you like those things that pop up? You are browsing. They just pop up. You didn't? They are unsolicited. That's the cry. Do you know why they pop up? Because they know you won't seek, seek them. So they have to imbibe them into the program to pop up. But there are some other things you, you type the address yourself. I'm looking. This is what I'm looking for. Some of you think God's word will pop up. You know what I'm saying? You'll be concerned with your daily activity without thinking about God. God will just say, I will pop up. Occasionally in mercy, it pops up. But it's a bride. It's not an hour. And you know yet, he still, he has a loud voice. The wisdom is crying, but yet in the quiet places. It's crying. It's like, sometimes, how many of you can take your mind back to your primary school? Just remember, if you never went to school, who will you be? Hello, I want to go to. He didn't train you how to use fork and knife. He didn't train you how to shake people. If some people shake people, the hand will go to hospital. Just, just imagine you are somewhere in one Ekiti town. And they didn't mention any of them. So, uh, one Akoko town, so that to balance it. Well, one Gala town somewhere. Are going to the farm. Coming out. Going to the farm. Coming out. We even tell you which Buhari is a woo. The only thing you think. 
But suddenly you now come to the to light, and they just tell you you can explore the world. Ninety days. This is your passport. And that person they placed him inside the airplane, and he landed in the UK. What will he do? Many of you have watched Oshofia in London before. He will misbehave because no matter the self control. There will be a shock. There will be a shock. What am I trying to say? He will discover that the world is brighter than it is meant to know. Wisdom is around. And wisdom is loud, but yet it's quiet. It is when you encounter it that you see its brightness. Are you, am I making sense? Let me read a couple of proverbs to you. And I'll stop for today. Proverbs 7. Proverbs 1 to 4. Are you blessed? May the Lord give you a new desire. My son, keep my words. Treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live. And my law as the apple of your eye. Yeah? Bind them upon you. Bind them. Go to verse 3. Bind them upon your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. You are the one that will say it. You know something about wisdom? We're looking at you. It is the price and the value you place on it that determines its response to you. Are, are you following me? Say to wisdom, you are my sister. Call understanding your nearest kinsman. One thing about it is that when you call it like that, it won't deny. It's the way you call it. And it will keep you from the moral woman. That said, see doctors, who flatter with our words. And I continue to read in that way. If I look through the window and I look through my lattice, I saw among the simple, I perceive among the youth a man devoid of understanding. Passing along the street of our corner, and he took her, he took the path to her house in the twilight in the evening, in the black and the dark night. There was a woman who met him with her attire of an alert with a crafty heart. She was loud, she's rebellious. Her feet will not stay at home. Things that you don't need always cross your path, whether you like it or not. Things that you need are looking from their own window. Is it that you come look for me? But the prostitute, have you ever gone to Allen in the night before? Last year I was I, I was in Allen around 2 a.m. I was going, I went to preach somewhere. Nyinga was there. Then we went to one of our friends' house. He took us on a night shopping. Went to to one supermarket 24 hours. So when we got back, <laughs> we wanted to drive out. All I noticed were two ladies just grabbed the doors of the car. What saved us is that we were already, we had already locked. I'm there. Because they could say, Pastor, I you know you before. You like sensational things. I was I was shocked because you did too. They were they wanted to jump in. Yeah, you see them no class. They've thrown away their crown. They are the description of distraction. Distraction is loud. It's rebellious. That's why when you say, I don't want, the things you say, I don't want to do, what do you do? The thing that's this you do, distraction is rebellious. The day you say, I want to serve God, that's the day that thing becomes strong. Say, I'm here. Weeds are not planted. They just grow. But true plants of harvest, you prepare the ground for them. You plant them. Are you following me? 
And I'm trusting God that you become deliberate about your growth. If you leave yourself to chance, you will encounter the rebellious spirit in the world. The spirit that works in the children of disobedience. That's what you will see. Proverbs 3 verse 13 to 18. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. And the man who gains understanding. For our proceeds are better than the profit of silver. Again than fine gold. She's more precious than rubies. All the things that you can, you may desire cannot be compared with her. Length of days is in her right hand. In her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness. Her paths are peace. It's like a tree of life to those who take hold on her. And happy are the people who retain her. Proverbs 24, 13 and 14. Thank you, Jesus. My son, heat only because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to your taste. Verse 14. And so shall the knowledge of wisdom be to your soul. May your soul desire knowledge. The challenge we are having in that day is that people's soul, you always crave after what your soul desires. And if you have found it, there is a prospect. And your hope will not be cut off. Jesus took that word and found the place where it's written. And read the place and he said, today. If you find it, there is a hope. If you find it, your expectation will not be cut off. Are you following me? Someone say, I must find it. But you cannot find it if the knowledge of wisdom is not like a crave for honey. There must be a longing to take. Honey by appearance, by taste, by viscosity is inviting. Have you noticed? Everything about it, if you touch it, you want to feel it. If you see it, you want to lick it. If you taste it, oh my God. God needs to bring you to a point that everything about the world is saying is, is, is appealing. It's appealing. It's appealing. And when it gets to that point, you will find it. And when you find it, your expectation shall not be cut off. Are, are, you, are, you, making, are, are you following me, church? May the Lord change your desires afresh and bring you into his word in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 8, 10 to 12. Thank you, Jesus. Read again. Tell your neighbor, read again. Proverbs 8, 10. Receive my instruction, not silver and knowledge, rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with that. Verse 12. High wisdom dwell with prudence, and I find out knowledge and discretion. Let me, let me just stop there. No, I, 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 I was contrasting the allot with the bride. It was in Psalm 45, it was describing the bride. He said, She shall be brought into the king's palace. The bride does not, you bring them. You know why they don't rush? It's their house. Have you discovered that, that? That's why they tell you when you are dating. Why it's so foolish to sleep around with somebody you are dating? It's because that's the spirit of a harlot. The are a lot of things that if I don't take it, I can't have it. The bride knows it's mine. So what does it do? He goes through all the process. Have you seen that brides don't walk in haste? The whole day can wait for them. It's their day. The whole church can wait for them. They can tell the groomsmen, oh, yeah, 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 you people move. But when is the bride? They will say, It's a day. There's nothing to rush. It's not an alert. You will sit with the word, not in a rush. You'll be taking it. A little here. A little there. Line upon line. Preserve it. 
Are you following me? A line there. You see, sometimes, it was my good doctor that said he has an altar in his house. And I was, imagine what is his altar? He said, there's a room in my house. The scripture is always open there. He said, if I enter, my eyes must fall upon something. I go there and sometimes I just pick a verse. I go for three hours, I'm thinking, then I come back, I leak another one. Because that's honey. How many of you discovered the, 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 last, the last time you took honey, something told you you will need to take it again. It, 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 it satisfied yet erased desire. That's the word of God. It answers and yet creates desire so that you will come back again and again and again and again for the word. It's time to read without a veil. Romans 15 verse 4 said, Romans 15 4, whatever things were written before, were written for what? For our learning. That we through the patience and comfort of scripture might have hope. If they were written for our learning, they will not profit us without our reading. A hand appeared to Belshazzar in Daniel chapter 5 and wrote, Many, many take care. And he brought his wise men and nobody could read it. Not anything written that is not read profits no person. After what is written, the next thing is who can read it? God did the writing with the prophets. The reading is for us unto whom the ends of the age has come. And they brought Daniel. Daniel said, I will read it. You have, you have not learned your lesson. You saw your father, but you didn't learn. Many, your kingdom has been weighed, found wanting, measured, numbered, and it's been taken away. That was when it made meaning. It only makes meaning if there's somebody to read what is written. What is written will just be silent there when there is no person to read. God had documented generations from generations that which is written. 1 Corinthians 6, 10, verse 6 told us, verse 6 and verse 11 told us. 1 Corinthians 10, 6 and 11. Are you blessed already? These things became our examples that to the intent that we should not lost after evil things have been lost. Verse 11. Now all these things happen to them as examples and they were written. They happened. They were written. Why were they written? So that they can last as lessons for many days. That fornication is still costly. That grumbling is still costly. That unbelief still takes away people from the purpose of God for their life. Are you following me? That, that people experience miracles does not stop them from still losing out. For these people drank from the from a spiritual rock, had spiritual meal, but they were carcasses or are still in the wilderness. Don't let your Christianity end with the miracles of God. Are you following me? God wants you to be a son that obeys him. That's the most important thing. And all these things happen to them as example, and they were written for our admonition. Upon whom the end of the ages have come. So today, I ask you, will you take advantage of that which is written for us? Stand to your feet, everybody. We want to, we want to steer a new quest in ourselves to read again. Thank you, Jesus. Pick, just go that, that Proverbs again from Proverbs 1 verse 5. A wise man will hear and increase learning. A man of understanding will attain wise counsel. A wise man will hear and increase learning. What does he say? A wise man knows that all to know is not what I know. So a wise man is still open to going over knowledge again. And do you know the only thing that happens to him when he goes all over it again? 
he increases. Proverbs 9 verse 9. Give instruction to a wise man and he will still be wiser. Is there somebody here that can still be wiser? Or, or maybe somebody has come. Is there somebody here that can still be deeper? Is there somebody here that can still have more access to the world? He will, will still be wise. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. I want you to begin to thank God for where he has brought you. Thank you for the lessons he has taught you. Thank you for the teachings and the word that he has brought to you. Thank him. We are not starting from the position of fools. We are starting from the position of the wise. Teach a wise man. And it will yet increase in knowledge. Father, we thank you for Jesus who took the veil from us. Somebody lift him up and praise him for Jesus who took the veil from you. That wisdom, it's Jesus that became your wisdom. Without him, you are foolish. Thank you, Jesus. But after Jesus has done that, you can still teach a wise man. I said, after Jesus has become your wisdom, you can still what? Teach a wise man. Sometimes I ask myself, when they say Solomon, I ask for wisdom. The asking itself is wisdom. How can, how can they tell you life of your enemy, wealth, great name, and you say wisdom? You're already wise. It's only the wise that look for wisdom. Teach a wise man. It will yet increase in wisdom. Are you following me? Say, Father, I'm open for increase in wisdom. Baptize me with a fresh desire for your word like never before. I'm open for increase. Somebody pray to God and say, I'm open for increase. I'm open for increase. I'm open for increase. I'm open for increase. I'm open for increase in the name of Jesus. Jalabo Shantalabaya. Mambro Mokoriadaba Shatoriaba. Who is open for increase here? Thank you, Jesus. We read again that he that read it my run in the name of Jesus Christ. I refuse to ignore the word of the Lord. I refuse to ignore the word of the Lord. I refuse to ignore the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jalabaka Sontaraba. We praying tonight. Lord, I'm open for increase. I'm open for depths. I'm open, I'm open for the leading of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I say in Jesus' name we pray. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 17. This is why wisdom must be courted. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 17. The words of the wise spoken quietly. Wisdom does not shout. The book Ukiah found in the temple was there under the dust. But it contained the destiny of a nation. But the Bible said, though it's spoken quietly, it should be heard. If you will hear a man that speaks quietly, you are the one that will adjust your hearing. Have you ever been in a lecture where the lecturer said, I won't shout more than this? This is the way I will talk. If you want to get knowledge from here, what do you do? You will pay attention. If you think I will be shouting over my voice, you are wasting your time. So when you get to that type of thing, what do you do? You change your seat. Somebody is about to change their seat. Somebody is about to change their posture. Somebody is about to change their desire. The words of the wise spoken quietly should be heard rather than the shout of a ruler of fools. Distraction is shouting. Why wisdom is quiet? But wisdom must be heard. Say, Father, I make every adjustment to hear your word without ambiguity. To pick what you are saying to me. To be, to be, to be rich in the word of God. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. In all wisdom. Lord, I want your word to dwell richly in me. I want to be rich in the word of God. Rich in the grace of God. Rich in all treasure. Rich in knowledge. Rich in, rich in direction. Lord, I open myself and make every adjustment. Some of you need to, to sleep lesser. Some of you need to sleep earlier so that you can have more time to pay attention to the world, to wait at his gate, to listen for his voice, to listen for his voice. And say, Father, I make adjustment. I just want the portion of the world to come to me. I just want it to come to me. I just want it to come to me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sandobo Bashande. Rabba kalaba yadaba, 
Rambo Koron Ramagadoshia. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Remalabayato Sandaya. Rusharaba. Lord, I open up to your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to pick write these two scriptures. I'll just give it to you. Leviticus 23, verse 33 to 43. Leviticus 23, verse 33 to 43. And Numbers 29, verse 12 to 40. Leviticus 23, 33 to 43. Numbers 29, 12 to 40. Those two scriptures spoke about the feast called the Feast of Tabernacles. But they spoke about it from two different perspectives. It was Leviticus 23, verse 33 to 43, that prescribed how Israel we go into the wilderness and bring leaves and bring branches and build boots so that they would dwell in that tabernacle for seven days to celebrate the feast of the tabernacle. But do you know what Numbers 29 told us about the feast of the tabernacle? He told them about the type of offerings they will be given for eight straight days. How they will be bringing from 14, the first day they are bringing 14 lamb, rams, the next day they are bringing 12, uh, 11, uh, 13, until you get to the seventh day when it will be seven rams. It was the same feast. But you see, the people who are concerned about those ones in the numbers are the Levites. The ones who are concerned about building boots are the Israelites. You can be doing the Feast of Tabernacle for years. So when you go to Ezra chapter 3, the Bible said they did the Feast of Tabernacles and they brought the sacrifices as it was written. Which means they have been doing it not as it was written because there is a part of it that is not festivity. Are, are you following me? There is a part of it that is consecration. We can be looking at the same thing and we are not saying the same thing. So if you have celebrated the Feast of Tabernacle by making boots, there is still something to learn. Go learn the sacrifices. If you have been doing it by the sacrifices, there is something to learn. That was why Jesus, he, after the practice of the Feast of Passover, he went to the scholars at 12, sat down with them, questioning them, answering their question. I don't just want to sit in the rights. I want to get the idea, the thoughts behind this thing. Are you following me? And you must get the thought of the word. You must get the thought behind the new covenant. You must get the thought where God said. That's why I said, when the choir was singing, they said, now nah, I will see, um, see me face to face. If you truly understand the thought behind it and what has been denied many generations, you are going to stand on your feet and shout. That, 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 that's a whole, a whole departure from, a, from an order. Are you, am I making sense? Teach a wise man. We will yet increase. Father, Thank you for baptizing all of us afresh with a craving for your word. Now, how many of you know that reading culture is already under attack? Not, of, not only Bible. Even me that I'm talking to you, I don't read as I, of, as I used to. There's too much distraction. It's not finished what has not played. Before I finish, when they say there is football break, I laugh. Because there is no break. The real football break is not up to three weeks. Then they will start precision. I'll put another competition in between. What are they trying to do? Hey, any time for a By the time you wake up, you are just 55. And when those DSTV knows that you are confused and that there is football break, they say, let's put Big Brother. I don't know how you even watch that one. That one I cannot fat on. Then they, some people say, hey, 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 what are their names? I know you will not tell. Uh, white money. You are in the former, you are in the former area. Well, there's no white money here. So look at me. The one now. Uh, oh, 
Oh, Tim. Who should I point to? Don't forget it. What am I trying to say? They want to occupy the space. So even if it is hard to read, even to go to school and read your book is hard. How much more to read the word? But what the enemy is trying to target is your quest to expand. Are you following me? But in Jesus' name, your mind is open again. Play that people. I said, in Jesus' name, your mind is open again. It's the prospect of knowledge will be like a cry for honey to your soul. In the name of Jesus Christ. This day, the Lord changed your desire. He arrests every of your distractions. In the mighty name of Jesus. The entrance of his word give a light. And understanding unto the simple. By the force of the life of God. Let the word of God gain an entrance. Let the word of God gain an entrance. Let the word of God gain an entrance. You will not be denied. You will not be deceived. In the name of Jesus. I bring you joy. So that you have not experienced for many years. The Bible said when they celebrated the Passover and the tabernacle that day, it has not been, such joy has not been in Israel for many years. As you connect back to light and knowledge of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is restored to you. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Ancient truths are reviving your soul in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we come with a new desire for your word. We are a people taught and we behold with an unveiled face the word of God. We are transformed from glory to glory as we behold your face. Thank you, Lord, for transformation happening in this house and in every heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord. The ancient words have a truth. Changing me and changing you. We have come with open eyes. Oh, let the ancient words. Ancient words have a true. Ancient words have a true. Changing me and changing you. I have come with open eyes. Oh, let the ancient words Shared words in part. Let it bring liberty. You send your word and it heal them and deliver them from destruction. With open hearts receiving, let there be healings. With open hearts receiving, let there be deliverances. With open hearts receiving, let there be answers. With open hearts receiving, let there be light. Take us on a fresh adventure. Take us on a fresh adventure. Peter said in the house of Cornelius, said, now I know, which means I don't used to know. But now I know. As you go this week, there's a now I, now I know experience coming to you. There's a new level of understanding that is visiting you. There's a now I know experience. 
that God is not a respecter of persons, but in every nation, wherever is fear, men are accepted with him. You will see God in a new dimension. It will make known to you his wisdom and his righteousness and his faithfulness. He will make known to you his reliability. He will stand beside you like a mighty and terrible warrior. Will, now your face will see the enemy trampled under your feet in the mighty name of Jesus. Now you know, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation rests upon you in a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah.